How's it going everybody? Hope you're doing great. Welcome back to that car vlog channel. If you don't already know, I'm Andy and this thing behind me is a Ram TRX. And we'll be doing this thing without the use of a tripod today because one of the parts to it is missing, the part the camera mounts to. Before I get started, I'd like to thank the folks at Twin City Certified of Maryville, Tennessee for providing the TRX for today's review. Once you're done watching this video, make sure you check them out at the link in the description below. Now I know I'm late to the TRX game, which, you know, being a smaller channel, that's to be expected. But because this year, 2024, is going to be the last year of the Ram TRX before they replace it with whatever they're going to do next, I decided this video absolutely needed to be done. But first, let's talk about why this thing exists. In order to do that, we need to talk a little bit about Ford. So from 2010 to 2015, Ford brought us the SVT Raptor based on the F-150 pickup truck. Now you could have one of two engine options in that truck, the larger being a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 producing 411 horsepower. After 2015, Ford would redesign the Raptor and drop the V8, give it the three and a half liter EcoBoost V6, the twin turbo. That would be your second generation Raptor. And then a little later on, they would redesign the F-150. They'd bring in the third generation Raptor, keeping that 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost V6. That produces 450 horsepower. And that's still what they're using right now in 2024 in the Raptor. Well, Dodge being Dodge, Chrysler, FCA at the time, now Stellantis, you know, we, they, they cannot be outdone by Ford. That, that, that's not, they can't have that. So they brought us this thing, the Ram TRX, based on the standard Ram 1500 truck. They brought us this in 2021. This truck, of course, has the supercharged 6.2 liter Hellcat V8, like in the Charger and the Challenger, producing 702 horsepower. And then, of course, naturally, you know, Ford decided, well, we can't have that. You know, we have to offer something better as well. American Truck Wars, what can I say? And they did eventually bring us the Raptor R with that supercharged 5.2 liter V8 out of the GT500 Mustang producing 700 horsepower. So those are two of the big three automakers in the US. What about Chevy? Um, <sighs> Chevy decided not to join this battle. The most hardcore 1500 silver auto based truck you can get is the ZR2 Bison, which I have recently reviewed and it is a cool truck and eventually to be up on the channel either before or after this video at some point, I don't know when, but it's still nothing compared to this or the Raptor. Keep in mind, of course, this is Chevy, the ones that brought the Blazer back as a crossover instead of doing what Ford did with the Bronco. Anyway, we're not here to talk about the other two. Let's talk about this guy right here. Now, full disclosure, the example we have today is a 2022. So a couple of things have been updated since 2022 for the 23 and 24s. Um, I'll try to show you that in this video if I'm able, but for the most part, it's all the same truck right up until now. So let's start here on the outside where I always start. And right up here on the hood, where you can tell this thing means business. Big bulging hood right here, big open air intake to get air into that supercharger. You got the three orange clearance lights right here. Those look cool, but they serve a different purpose. We'll talk about that in a second. Up here, you got some heat extractor vents because you're gonna get a lot of heat in that engine bay. And of course, the 6.2 liter supercharged badge for bragging. Coming down from there, look at this big, huge grill on the front of this thing and check out your Ram logo. It's actually hollow, kind of like Chevy's flow tie, except this is a Ram. And uh, yeah, that's gonna allow you to get a lot of air into that radiator. You got a little bit more grill right here and even more grill down there. Trying to get maximum air into that radiator. Looking over here, these are your standard Ram headlights. This is pretty much what you're gonna get in all of the trims of the Ram that have LED headlights. Over here on the driver's side, I've got the signal on so you can see how the signal replaces the running lamp when it's blinking. That's really actually a kind of a cool touch. And then right here on the, to the side of the headlight, there's this vent and you can probably see some light in there. That's actually an aerodynamic touch so air can flow in here and come out this vent in back because this is a big huge vehicle if you can get any kind of aerodynamic touches in this thing at all definitely definitely a good idea to move down even lower you got some nice big beefy recovery hooks right here and you got your led fog lights and you got your orange clearance lights right there on the corners to go with those three up top because this truck is wide eight inches wider than your standard four-wheel drive ram making it have to comply with federal commercial truck regulations in terms of lighting. So that's why you got the clearance lights on there. And let's face it, it just looks way cooler like that. As we make our way down the side, you can see factory 35 inch all-terrain off-road tires on this thing. Massive beastly tires mounted on these 18 inch wheels. Optional are 18 inch beadlock capable wheels, which of course we don't have here. But if you want a little bit more capability, definitely get those beadlock capables. 
Out here in back, if we get down in the fender well, you're going to see these massive Bilstein shock absorbers. These braided lines, I mean, these things absolutely mean business. These things are tough, dude. Stepping back now and just looking, it's probably very obvious, of course, that this thing is lifted compared to a normal four-wheel drive Ram truck, which it needs to be. Between the lift, the suspension upgrades, and the massive tires, you're getting right around 12 inches of ground clearance. I've read 11.8. I've heard estimates of a little over 12. So I'm just going to meet in the middle and say right around 12 inches total ground clearance on this thing. And as we get underneath here, Contributing to this truck's ultra toughness, of course, you've got a big long skid plate right there. You got the one that runs from the front. You got this one right here. You got one right there that protects your transfer case. Of course, you got one right there to protect your gas tank. And your frame is also reinforced too. Check it out. Fully boxed frame all the way down the truck. Full box. I mean, they really, really wanted this thing to be as tough as possible. Look at this massive cross member that runs from one side to the other. This isn't holding anything up. This is reinforcing the frame. Mopar. I take that back. The skid plate's bolted to it, so it is holding something up. But otherwise, that's all it is, is structural rigidity. And look at these Bilstein shocks again. Look, you can tell these things are made to go on this truck. They are branded Bilstein TRX right there. And I'm pretty sure we probably saw it right here, too. They actually have the TRX branding on them because they are made for this truck. Then coming around back, you have your typical Ram tail lights. Nothing special there. You got your tails right here in the surround. Your brake lights are going to light up here. And of course, when you hit the signal, those brake lights are going to be replaced with the signal lights right there. Big ram across the tailgate, nothing special there. Backup camera right there, 4x4 badge, nothing special. The special badge is right here, the TRX badge. Tell the people, no, you're driving the cool one. And of course, you got these massive dual exhaust tips in the back. Those things are huge. They look great. We'll see how they sound here in a little bit. When we do drop the tailgate, there's really not a lot special back here. There is a bag someone left here. That's fine. Nothing all that special back here. You do get some bed lighting, which is nice, although it's not coming off for me right now. But it's a decent sized bed. It is lined. And before we leave the rear of the truck, let's look down here under the tailgate. There, of course, you got your red clearance lights between the tailgate and the bumper. And then right here in the fender flares, you got your corner lights right there. Because once again, big, huge, wide, commercial sized truck opening up to the interior now and i do like the way this door panel looks it is very black in here there's not a lot of contrast but you got some nice metallic looking trim right here some different types of you know patterns and textures a little bit of nice perforated fabric texture right here some soft touch right here on the armrest of course you got your full array of power controls you're going to expect in a vehicle this expensive a little bit of cup holders right here which are actually that's interesting that is a foam insert so i guess it keeps rattling around that's actually a good idea storage in the door of course in multiple places of course there's one of the speakers for your alpine sound system which actually is a pretty good sounding system in this truck aluminum sill plate here on the door or at least aluminum looking it says ram right there here you got your power adjustable front seats right here they got a pretty decent amount of bolstering that's not bad at all and then up here in the seat back of course you got the trx embroidered right there because of course all right now to climb in the truck there are no step boards. I'm, I have a feeling maybe you could have probably optioned step boards on this truck, but step boards reduce ground clearance. So you just learned a little bit of the fact that you got to step way up high and pull yourself in, Whew, which is uh, not an easy chore for a fat guy like me. Now that we're inside, let's fire it up with the red start button because a black start button would be lame on a truck like this. And let's get the air flowing in here because it is getting kind of warm. And we'll start off looking directly in front of us at the steering wheel. Now this is actually a pretty nice steering wheel. It's got a little bit of what looks like a leather wrap and it's got some contrasted stitching on it. It looks pretty nice. It's nice to hold in the hand. You got a typical array of RAM controls here. You got this over here to control your cruise control. These over here, of course, are gonna be for your phone. And then you got your controls here for that center display in the gauge cluster, which we'll get to in a second nice flat bottom make it easy to get in and out of it you got more of that texture that pattern from the door right here almost like a almost a diamond plate type of pattern looks really good love the blacked out ram logo on the wheel i do like that and look right here you got paddle shifters up and down for that eight speed automatic transmission but check out how they made these you see they're actually split right here so that you can control them top or bottom whatever you want but this allowed ram to leave the fingertip audio controls in the truck so you got this one over here for volume and such you got this one on the other side for switching presets or whatever dodge chrysler even before it was fca and way before it was stellantis they were they were doing this right here on all the dodge chrysler type of vehicles which is really cool it's right there at your fingertips and keep your focus on the road while you're messing with your audio all right looking now at the gauge cluster in the trx now this is the original cluster that came out in 21 for the trx i do believe for 23 they did switch to the upgraded 
fully digital screen like in a lot of new Chrysler Jeep type vehicles. It's a display that I really like and hopefully I'll be able to show you guys in this video. I think I've got one I can look at. So hopefully they'll be able to do that. Anyway, I still do like this analog gauge cluster. It's really cool looking, it's really sporty. Got your cool tack over here with your temp gauge down here. Speedometer over here that registers 120 with your gas gauge. Definitely some nice, cool, sporty looking gauges. You got your TRX logo up there that I do believe lights up. It's a little light outside to tell that for sure, but if I'm not mistaken, it does light up, which is awesome. And then of course, right here in the middle is your center, your driver information screen. Like I said a second ago, these buttons here on the left of the wheel are what you're gonna use to control that. So let's go through this thing. And the first page we landed on when starting the truck was page four here, the performance page. And this thing is really cool. This right here is your drag timer. Right here in front of you, you can actually set this thing to tell you how fast you hit 60 feet, 330 feet, quarter mile. If you're at the drag strip, right here in front of you in the gauge cluster. That is really cool. But there's even more stuff under that tab. Look at this, you got zero to 60, zero to 100. You got, I mean, look at this, braking distances, G-forces. I mean, this is crazy. Lap timers, lap timing history. And of course, a big digital speedometer right there in front of you. We go down from that, you got your fuel economy. Um, don't look at this one, it'll just make you sad. Of course, you got your trip info, you got your trailer towing with your trailer brake and Oh my God, just all kinds of different settings for that as well. Trailer light check. And then from that, here's your audio. It'll tell you what's playing in the system at any time. Of course, you got your messages, your screen setup, all that good stuff, diagnostics. Back up to page one, you got the big digital speedometer, vehicle info. I mean, this, is, this has got a lot of great information in this one as well. All kinds of temperature readings, pressure readings. I mean, whatever you're going to want to know for this thing. Look, you got horsepower gauge right there, a torque gauge. I mean, what in the world? I mean, just all kinds of amazing readouts for a truck of this level of coolness. I'm, I'm having trouble even putting words to it. And then of course you got the off-road page right here where you got your drivetrain status with your steering angle right there up top and click over, you got pitch and roll and you've got your rear wheel articulation, which is a really cool measurement. I haven't seen personally in really any purpose-built off-roader I love that it's in this truck. That's kind of a cool little um, piece of information you have right there. Now, in relation to gauges, one thing I'm not seeing here is a head-up display. I cannot remember if that's something that's available or not, but I think it'd be a great idea if you, you know, you're driving around a 700 horsepower truck. Over here to the right side of the wheel, we saw that red start-stop button before. You gotta have that in a truck this cool. And down here is a great series of buttons as well. Now, normally on a non-TRX, Ram would put a transmission selector dial right here for your park reverse, all that stuff you'd have a dial, but they decided that this area needed to be designated for the cool buttons. So you got your four wheel drive selector right here. No two wheel drive option in this truck. It is always in some type of four wheel drive. Usually default in four wheel drive auto, you've got your four high, your four low, and you got your axle locker as well. And then off to the side of that, you got probably the coolest button in this interior, your button to activate launch control, which has a drag strip Christmas tree on it. That's just I mean, I don't care. There may be cooler launch control activation sequences out there, but this is both the fastest and graphically the coolest. Above that, you got these two buttons right here that switch your drive modes. We'll go ahead and look at those drive modes right now. And to do that, we've got to be up here looking at the gauge screen. So you start out in auto, I guess we would consider that normal, although this truck is not normal. You got a custom mode, you can configure that any way you want. We'll show you that in a second. Click over from that, you got mud and sand, you got rock crawling mode, you got Baja mode. Come on, Baja. There's Baja for your high-speed sand driving. And then your sport mode. And then your tow mode. And then you got snow mode. And back around to auto or normal mode. So here we are now on this 2023 TRX. It's on the same lot. And it's got some of these advanced features. So first of all, this is that gauge screen I was talking about that I really like from Stellantis right now. People can say whatever they want about Stellantis, but I do like this gauge screen. So check this thing out. It's got a lot of great information. First of all, check out that tachometer right there along the bottom. Just give it a rev right there. Of course, you get your speedometer right up here. You got some vehicle information right here. There's your MPGs. We're not going to pay any attention to that. Not in a truck like this. Just click over and look at all these gauges you get, all these readouts you get right here in front of you on the screen. I mean, this is really nice. Look at all these gauges. I can't, I love that. Right in front of you, it's beautiful. Now, come down here, you got this button right here. Press this button, and now you get these tiles in front of you. And this is really cool. So you can display literally anything you want in front of you. Start over here on the right, select whatever you want to go in here. This, you can select any gauge you want to go in this tile, whatever you want. 
over here here's your media here of course your driver assist you can see there's that car in the lane for the lane keeping here's another tile where you can select a different gauge that you want to see over here's your trip information stuff like that as well as your turn by turn nav then we're going to hold the ok button to go into editing and you can select the number of tiles you want to see here so you want five maybe four three two just one whatever i like the five we're going to keep it on the five that's really cool as well now we're back on that first screen that i showed you but check it out this is not all there is check this out you get the little arrow with this three down here this is vehicle info up here's your driver info speedometer if all you want is the speedometer and a gauge over here and some info over there for tire pressure cool we're going to go down from that into performance check out the performance just like i showed you there all these cool racing performance metrics you get right here in front of you just in a bigger display click down again here's your trip info click down one more time here's navigation and here's the best part of this screen full screen map right here in front of you i love this every auto manufacturer that gives you a full screen gauge cluster should give you the option of a full screen map right there in front of your face i love that stellanus is starting to put these in vehicles just like this general motors has started to as well obviously audi's been doing it for years more and more auto makers need to do this this is just absolutely brilliant scroll down from that again here's your off-road vehicle dynamics so you drive train wheel articulation steering all that thing right there and a little bit of tra trailer tow audio messages settings diagnostics and right back up to our speedometer so great great versatile display right there you switch through your drive modes it's gonna show them right there in front of you. Not quite as fun as the way the other one did it, but it's still right there in front of you. And the last button in this grouping of buttons is this TRX button. So we're gonna push this button and direct our attention to the 12 inch center infotainment screen. And we'll hit that button. It's gonna take us directly into this performance dashboard right here. And here it's showing all of your different drive modes. Now this is the other way that you can switch drive modes. You can do it right here from this page in the screen. It is more convenient to use the buttons down there, but the advantage you get here is it'll tell you how that drive mode configures the truck so you got what mode everything is in depending on what mode you're in of course you put it in custom mode and go down here to custom setup and that's where you're going to set up your custom drive mode you see you got all the parameters here transmission paddle steering suspension all that what mode do you want each one of those aspects of the truck to be in for your custom drive mode okay now let's talk a little bit more about this infotainment setup one i love it's it's only 12 inches but the way it's set up it's still a huge vertical display i really do like it one thing i do like is the majority of your climate controls the most important things are here on the side you got your auto your fan speed your mode right here to change your positioning of course you got your temperature up and down going across the top there's your hazards then going down the other side you got the passenger zone here and of course your defrosters and things like that as well as your recirculation it is really nice that there are physical controls on the sides of the screen so that everything isn't integrated into the screen however there is still a comfort tab down here on the screen where you're going to be able to do a bit more there are redundant controls for your temperature positioning fan speed that kind of thing but this is where the controls are going to be for things like your heated steering wheel or your heated seats for the front. You have three level heated seating. I think the newer ones have cooled seating as well, but I could be wrong. This is mostly redundant, but there are a couple things you're gonna to need to be on this page for. Now looking at the other tabs in the screen, they are all lined up here at the bottom at all times, so you're never gonna to have to search for them. Starting up here on the right, you got the apps tab, and of course you go here to all apps, and you got just all kinds of different things to select from right here. You got phone apps, media apps, whatever. Right here you can probably see you got Android Auto. I do believe you also get Apple CarPlay in these, but I'm not seeing it, so don't quote me on that. Down here's phone, so we're gonna go to set up or select a phone, navigation. Look at that big map that comes up on this screen. That's one thing I like about the screen, you get a big vertical map, and it is fairly responsive. It's not terrible at all, it's nothing I would really complain about. Here's a comfort tab we were just in, media tab, that's where you're gonna have all your, oh look, Apple CarPlay. Right here's where you're gonna have all your, well, your audio. Here's your, of course, where you're gonna choose your audio source. Um, audio settings that kind of thing nice big display for that here's your home screen and i like this home screen for one you've got looks like three different pages almost like a smartphone and this is really cool you got like you get your map here you got your carplay down here and your phone right here swipe over you actually have active gauges right here that's really cool to see shortcuts what's on this third screen right here that one's got gauges again that tells me that you can probably also choose what you want um, if you want to jump into something full screen, tap right here in the corner of whatever that is in that panel, and it brings you up full screen. Really cool. Go down to edit pages, and you can add a page, you can delete the page, you can reorder the pages. And if you decide you don't like the position of a particular panel, just touch and hold it, and 
swap them. And yes, if you tap the little pencil in the corner of one of those little boxes, you can go in here and tell it what you want in that box, what widget you want in that box. Really cool. Our last tab down here is the vehicle tab, and this is where some of the cool stuff starts. So let's go into vehicle, and right now it's on the controls tab, which doesn't have a lot there. You got your mirror dimmer, your rear view camera. I'll go ahead and pull that up to let you see. It is actually a pretty decent rear view camera. It's hard to capture that on camera, but it's not terrible. I've seen worse, I've seen better, but this is right about middle of the road. I do like the way this rear view camera looks. We'll click out of that. Go over here to settings. You've got, I mean, you just got a plethora of different settings for these cars. Of course, all your modern vehicles just have an absolute ton of things to change settings on. We're not gonna go through all that though, but I definitely want you to see that setting screen. It is crazy. But now we're going over here to dashboard and this is where it's going to get cool. So first off, let's go down here, click on the drive modes. And this puts us back in that screen I showed you before where you can change the drive modes on the screen and see how everything's configured. Back out of that, go to race options. This is cool. So this is the other way that you can activate your launch control. You can go into here. There's one, there's the button, activate it. And down here is where you're going to set at what RPMs you want launch control to activate. So you can go a maximum of 3,500 RPM for a launch or you can have a 1500 RPM launch, or you can just go somewhere in the middle at 2500. That's cool as crap. Go here to shift light, and yes, this thing does have a shift light. It'll tell you when to shift gears if you're using the paddle shifters, and you can tell at what RPM you want it to tell you to shift. Maybe you don't want to shift at 6000 RPM across all gears. You can tell it at what point you want that light to tell you, hey dude, shift. Of course, you got the race cooldown tab right here, which is going to be nice and helpful because you definitely want the system to sit and cool down before you turn it off after driving really hard. And then performance pages. Go into performance pages, and this is really cool. So look at this drag race time. Use your reaction time, 60 feet, quarter mile, all of that. Down here, acceleration and braking. Right here, go into gauges. You get two pages of all kinds of different gauges. And I mean, once again, you get a lot of the gauges that I showed you in the center screen. Stuff like intake air temp, stuff like uh, stuff like air fuel ratio, intercooler coolant temp, boost pressure. Really cool. Go in here. You got a, you got dyno screens. You got G-force gauges. Go to vehicle dynamics. You got your steering angle. You, you got your rear axle articulation, your four-wheel drive status, all that. Lots of really really cool things to see in this screen. Definitely a great use of technology in this Ram TRX. Going across to the passenger side, you've got this nice cool TRX badge on the dash on this upper glove box lid. Push that button and that lid flips right open. Of course, you got a lower glove box down here. Nothing special there, it's just a glove box. Moving up from all that, you got a typical rear view mirror, nothing special to see right here. And then up here's your rear view mirror, but in this one, it's not just a rear view, it is a rear view mirror camera. This is what I'm talking about. Especially in big trucks like this, this is what you want. And you can adjust. You want to adjust your brightness? Cool. Maybe you want to adjust the positioning of the camera, up or down. You can do that. Um, I don't think there's a zoom function, but I don't think you really need it. If you don't want it, you can switch back to a standard mirror, but this is so much better in a big truck like this. And especially if you have people in the back or tall items in the bed, this is what you want. You also got your button right here to open and close that rear sliding window on the back with power instead of having to have it done manually. Below the screen, you got your integrated trailer brake controller. You got a bunch of auxiliary switches, which are kind of like the upfitter switches in your Ford Raptors. Um, not quite as satisfying to use, but you do have them there if you want to wire in auxiliary lighting, things like that. You don't have to drill switches into your truck. You've got switches right here. Below that, you got a little storage area right here. I'm not sure what you would put in that, but you've got it. You got USB type A and type C ports and an auxiliary in. Right here, you got a place where you can stand up your phone with a slot for the cable to run through for charging. Back from there, dual cup holders with a cover if you don't want to see those. Here, of course, is your automatic shift lever. Nice front to back action, nothing special there. Uh, if we pull back and pop it over into S, you can manually shift this thing up and down, or you can do it the supercar way and use the paddles. As we move back to the center console lid, I want to zoom in on this badge right here and check this thing out. Every TRX gets this badge, it's really cool. You get your engine information, supercharged 6.2 liter Hemi. Here's your supercharger information, 2380 cc twin screw. Of course, you got your horsepower right here, your VIN number right here on this plate, and your boost pressure as well. All right there on that plate, just another cool touch for, well, I'm going to say it again, a cool truck. Nice what feels like Alcantara on top with some leather on the sides, is at least what it feels like. It feels, feels and looks really nice. You got a couple more cup holders on the back of it that are probably going to be more for the rear seats. And then when you open your center console, you've got two different levels of storage. Open the first top level right here, you got a little bit of shallow storage with a USB type A port right here for charging stuff up. 
open the other section up and it reveals a bunch of coin slots and a small little storage area for like a pin or something also got a little storage area right there behind the shifter and then you got the deep center console storage area 115 volt household type plug right there and then down here is the coolest part of any center console and of course that is your scale depictions of a person a trx a t-rex and the itty bitty raptor i really think dodge is trying to say something here but that is super cool but the cool doesn't stop in the front let's open up the back and check it out you get the same styling treatment in the back as you do in the front i say it every time but i'll keep saying it now i love when automakers include the back of the car or truck with the front the seats right here have pretty much the same design they look good they don't have the cool bolstering they don't have the embroidery that's kind of a typical thing with back seats though i'm not too mad about that look at the seats right here just as you'd expect in a full-size truck these will flip up both sides and you get a nice storage bin right here you can put a small amount of stuff in here and hide it as it is but if you need a bigger storage box you can of course twist right here flip this down just like this and now that opens up and it's just a bit bigger you can see you get some bigger items in here put the seats down hide them from public view whatever of course put all that back and you've got this nice big open floor for storing large items maybe bicycles whatever that you don't want out in the weather you want them locked up in the truck you've got it and the seats just go right back down nice and easy nothing special right there last thing to look at on the seats pull down right here in the center you get a nice center armrest with cup holders Look at the back of the front seats right here. You get a decent little storage pocket right here. Nothing huge, nothing crazy. Uh, you get some straps right here, I guess for hanging gear on or whatever. They kind of resemble the Molly system in more serious off-road purpose trucks, but not really. I still say that's what that's for. It's definitely useful for it. Here, of course, is the back of the center console. We can see you've got access to those two cup holders right here. A shallow storage space right here. Rear climate vents, although it is not a separate zone. Got 115 volt house type plug right here. And of course, two USB A's, two USB C's. So you can definitely charge a lot of devices in the back of your MTRX as well. But that's not the only thing the rear seat has to offer. Just like many full size trucks, the rear seat also offers a ton of room. Oh, and you see I had to climb up again, but look at this. Now I've already set this driver's seat to what I need to drive the truck. I did that as I moved it over here and look at all this space I've got in the back of this truck. This is insane. I mean, this, <laughs> I hate riding in the back of vehicles. I hate it mainly because I'm a car guy and I want to be driving, but because the back seats are normally a lot tighter and my knees cannot stand that but this is great i mean i probably still wouldn't be able to stand it because i can't stretch all the way out straight but for most people this is an insane amount of leg room and i mean i love it full-size america trucks are amazing for this and i really think dodge does a great job i'm sorry ram and of course being a full-size truck you also get a bunch of headroom up here really really nice and i just noticed speakers right above your head okay that's kind of cool i like that I gotta say, I don't hate the back seat of this truck, although I still wanna be up here. Not here, here. And now the part everybody wants to see, get with it, Andy, just get on with it. Okay, let's do it. Let's check out the powertrain in this beast. Throw that hood up, it's got hood struts, which is amazing. Now, before we check out the engine, I know, God, Andy, just get to it. Before we check out the engine, check out the cover here. Usually we hate beauty covers, but this one's kind of cool. It's got the TRX right there. Here you can see there's the inlet from that hood scoop that feeds that supercharger. We're gonna pull this beauty cover off and set it aside and check out this plastic in front of the intake right here. Look at this. You've got the T-Rex eating the Raptor. You're not gonna see that unless you pull that beauty cover off, but there it is. Another message from Dodge. We're better than you. We'll eat your lunch. That is awesome. But now if we come around here, look behind the intake, here it is, the business end of the truck, the part that makes the TRX what it is, you know, along with all the other stuff, the 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8 from the Hellcat Challenger and Charger, the Hellcat V8. Now this version of the engine makes 702 horsepower, 650 pound-feet of torque, thanks to that nearly 2.4 liter twin screw supercharger sitting on top of it hey look i found my tripod <laughs> anyway a few more figures that have to do with the powertrain in this truck like we just said 6.2 liter supercharged v8 702 horsepower 650 pound feet of torque now ram claims a zero to 60 on this truck of right around 4.5 seconds car and driver managed to test it to about 3.7 so the high threes 
quarter miles rated at 12.3. It can tow up to 8,100 pounds, payload of up to 1,300 pounds. And then there's the part that nobody wants to hear and honestly TRX owners probably don't even care about. And that's gonna be fuel economy. EPA estimated 10 miles per gallon city, 14 highway, 12 combined. I really doubt that um, people like me are going to get double digit fuel economy numbers in a truck like this. It's just too insane. Anyways, all that power is pushed through an eight speed automatic transmission with those paddle shifters right there through a four wheel drive system to the ground sitting on those 35 inch all terrain tires. Now with a power plant like this, with all that power, surely this thing has to sound good. Oh, well, for those who have never driven anywhere and seen a TRX or heard a Hellcat engine going down the road, let's go see what it sounds like. I promise you, you're gonna love this. Now, sadly, this is not going to be a cold start because I've had to move the truck around a bit and it's gonna be warmed up, but it's still gonna sound great. Man, this thing makes my V8 Dodge Dakota from 1994 sound like a Civic with a cherry bomb. This thing is insane. Anyways, there you guys go. That's a full tour of a Ram TRX. This one, of course, is a 2022, but whatever. Now let's see if we can't get this thing out on the road and drive it and honor the soon to be canceled Ram TRX. All right, getting out here, driving the TRX. And Man, she sounds good. We gotta get through some traffic first, but first thing about this truck, you get in this thing and you, you can feel just how massive this truck is. It's got this huge nose in front of you, this massive hood bulge sticking up. It's wide as can be. You really gotta pay attention driving down the road, you know, make sure you're still in the lines because this thing is obviously much wider than a standard Ram truck. Comfort, this thing's pretty comfortable. I do wish it had cooled seats for a day like this but I can deal with it. Visibility is okay in a truck like this. It's about what you expect from a full-size truck. The width really doesn't compromise it that much. Once we get an open stretch, we'll really start to hear what this thing sounds like and feels like to accelerate. Yeah, that sounded pretty good. It wasn't even that much. You actually could start to hear that supercharger whine too. The thing about a truck like this is even though it is extremely powerful, it still is easy to drive. It's not intimidating. It's not hard to drive a truck like this under normal conditions, which is also very nice. Tire noise, there is some tire noise because you are running those big 35 inch all-terrain tires. If you listen, you can hear it, but if you turn the radio on, it won't bother you one little bit. And I'm sure for some people, they're not bothered by tire noise anyway, so it probably doesn't even matter. Steering handling is not unwieldy whatsoever. In fact, I say the wider track on this thing makes it even more stable and you know handle even better. Suspension feels okay. It's not obviously it's not the softest stuff in the world. It is off-road tuned and we just went over some bumps from where they'd scraped the road up and it was definitely a little bit harsh. But if you're looking for a Rolls Royce, you're not looking for this truck, so. God, the sounds this thing makes, even under light acceleration, that that Hemi just sounds so good coming out the rear of this truck. You almost don't want to play the radio just because of how great it sounds across this road here and of course it does it absolutely no problem because it's just laying down the power and that really wasn't even laying down the power but if you do want to get around somebody or get up an entrance ramp real quick just my god that sounds good that is fast and that's not even using launch control all right now we're going to test out just how bad this thing is we're going to push this launch button right here and just let's see let's go into vehicle real quick let's see where we set we're set at 2500 that's right in the middle we'll, we'll, we'll work right in the middle so apply brake pressure apply full throttle and release good god almighty <laughs> oh and the brakes are really good too the brakes worked very, very well. Um, I don't know, cameraman, what you... Uh... I didn't know it could do that. Uh, you want to do it again? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's, that sounds like a yes to me. 
<laughs> it's made for it. <laughs> oh, that launches so hard. Now, I will admit it does not launch as hard as say a Tesla Model X Plaid, which I have driven. That thing that thing will flatten you into the seat. It doesn't launch as hard as the Rivian R1T with the quad motor. But this thing still launches hard and between the two of those trucks I'd still take this over the Rivian any day. Although I do love the Rivian. Let's uh turn that launch up to 3500. That's max launch. All right, now it's set to 3500. So launch control, pressure, apply full throttle, and release. I believe every bit of that 3.7 to 60. Every bit of it. Still on us rates this thing at 4.5. Um, yeah, that was not 4.5. <laughs> Oh, that is insane. Oh, that is insane. Okay, so. I think two people got joy out of this today. That was wild. <laughs> oh, and you know, just for the hell of it, let's pop it over here in manual and see what the response is on those paddles. That's tight. It's all right. It's maybe a millisecond delay it's like not a full second delay but it's a slight delay you're not it's not a dual clutch transmission so <laughs> you're not gonna expect lightning quick shifts on this thing we'll pop it back in a regular automatic though see that right there that was harsh but oh my god what an insane truck and that just makes me even more sad that 24 is the last year for these things because this is this is this is the kind of thing americans need now, if you're wondering about pricing, you're not going to get one of these cheap. Your 2024 is going to start you right around $96,000. Um, and these things hold value pretty well. This thing's sitting at 19000 I think you guys got a price of, what, 88 or something? Uh, this one right here is 84 80, Yeah, they hold their value very well. Um, there is a final edition package that you can put on the truck for this year that offers you a, bit, a few more, you know, goodies. Because it is the final, final edition of the truck, you can offer you a few nicer things package would be right around twelve to thirteen thousand dollars but i don't know i don't know i'm not the kind of person that should talk about the car market and how pricing will work and things like that in the future um but i have a feeling that 2024 being the last year of the supercharged v8 trx that if you want one you better get it quick because these things are going to shoot up in value as we continue more and more into our electric future um i have seen jesus christ oh, i wasn't even trying that one um i have seen already the teasers for um what ram is calling the rho the successor to this truck um this video is being recorded prior to the april 25th unveiling date so i have no other details than that except the rumors that it is most likely going to have the inline six hurricane engine from Stellantis. I guess we'll see how the uh, future of Ram's badass off-road trucks goes. But as far as the supercharged V8 monster under this hood, 24 is it. So, moment of silence, I guess. That's enough of that. Okay, so I did just check out the April 25th reveal video on the Ram Trucks YouTube channel for the new RHO, the TRX replacement, and it is exactly what we thought it was going to be. It is no longer going to have the 6.2 liter supercharged V8. So from what I'm seeing, we do have pretty much the same body style truck with a slight facelift, but instead of the big V8 engine, now we are getting the 3 liter Hurricane inline 6 engine. We are way down on power, 540 horsepower, 521 pound-feet of torque, although it is still more than your standard Ford Raptor, which produces 450 horses and 510 pound-feet of torque. Ram is claiming 0 to 60 in about 4.6 seconds with this thing. Starting price of around 69995 We'll see if that holds true as this thing goes on sale, whether or not that's going to truly be the price or not. Uh, as far as interior styling, it's also mostly the same. Um, it looks like we're getting a slightly larger infotainment screen 
14 inches over the 12 inch screen. Maybe it's gonna have a few more controls on it. And it looks like they'll also be offering a passenger display, kind of like we've seen in a lot of supercars, a 10 and one quarter inch diagonal passenger display for playing music and videos and whatnot. So that should be interesting to see. So yeah, just as we thought, we are out with the 6.2 supercharged V8 and in with the Hurricane in line six. All right, y'all, that's gonna do it for the Ram TRX. My God, this thing has got to be one of the absolute coolest modern trucks that there is, hands down. I mean, there's cooler stuff than this, but you gotta pay a whole lot more money for them. You know, unattainable things like AMG 6x6s, things like that. But for a truck that you can get for right around $100,000, maybe less used, this thing is insane. I've not driven a standard Raptor. I've not even driven a first gen Raptor. I've not driven a Raptor R. So I don't know personally how those things perform, but it's gonna be hard to match or even beat this thing. At this point, you pretty much have to heavily modify an already insane truck or go electric. I've driven the Rivian R1T and it is an amazing truck and it does pull a lot harder than this thing. But you know what it doesn't do? It doesn't sound like a Hellcat Hemi V8 coming out the tailpipe and that is what I love. And I'm absolutely gonna miss these things as they are going away after the 2024 model year. Like I said before, in my opinion, if you're looking to get one of these and you think you can pull off the price of a used one or even a new one, get it now. You're rude. Because I have a feeling that these things are gonna trade for crazy high values for quite a while. The inline six may turn out to be a great motor in this thing's replacement, if that's what indeed they're using, but it's just not gonna have the same sound or the same spirit as this truck. The electrics are cool, but once again, you're losing the spirit. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and I promise you I greatly enjoyed making this video. If you wanna see what else I got going on the channel, make sure you go back and watch the rest of my videos, and if you like what you see, consider subscribing to this channel, share the videos, give them a like, pass it on, share this beautiful truck with your fellow car lovers. It needs to be shared. Once again, huge special thanks to the folks up here at Twin City Certified in Maryville, Tennessee for allowing me to use this amazing piece of machinery for today's review. Once you're done watching this video, check the description below where you're going to find a link to their website to check out their great inventory. Anyways, guys, thanks you all again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.